Hi, in this video, we're going to look at something called Creator Studio. It's a companion piece to YouTube. As a, as a consumer of YouTube, you can simply come to YouTube, you can log in or not log in, and you can watch videos. But as a creator, as somebody who publishes videos, um, you have the YouTube site that houses your particular channel. So I come in here and I make sure that I'm in my correct channel. And then if I want to see it, I go to your channel. You can see that eh, it's not looking great yet. I mean, it's got an OK banner and some things, but I, my front page is a little empty. But if I come to videos, you can see that I have uploaded a series of videos here. And I have included a series of playlists here. OK, and these were all basically created on the fly. As I uploaded them, I was able to create and assign playlists which is fine, but um, there's another area of YouTube here that if I, if I come under my main icon, there's also something called YouTube Studio. Uh, this used to be called, I think, Creative Studio or Creator Studio, but they've updated it. When I click on that, I'm coming to another whole area. Uh, now, this is certainly for people who are looking to use this as a marketing tool or to monetize this is a very important area. But if you're just, just using this as a space to distribute content and organize content for your students, uh, there's also, you want to be at least familiar with it. So this is your dashboard. Um, it, it gives you, uh, basically here, it's telling you how my, how my last video did. Hey, look, it's got zero views. Uh, there's no click-through rate. There's really very little information here. But if I come to the next icon, this is my content or my, um, generally my videos. I could also have live streams over here, but these are my uploads for now. And it has shortcuts to analytics. This would give me analytics on this particular video. Again, generally, if we're using this with our classes, we're not that concerned about the analytics. Uh, we've probably disabled comments. Um, this would allow me to jump to this video right on YouTube. So it opens a new tab, and now I'm back on the YouTube side, and I'm and I'm seeing my um, my video as anybody else would see it. I have some options over here. I can edit the title and description. So here's a quick shortcut. Uh, when I first uploaded these, I didn't give the file a good name, and I didn't give it a description. So I can. Um, Okay, that's still a poor name, but I can do that right here and save it. Now that's done for that video. Um, I can get a shareable link. So it's just another way to get a link to that video. Here it is. Okay, um, under here I can also we're not going to do too much with promotion. You can download this. Okay, now the only thing to know about downloading is you can upload your videos to YouTube. You can download five a day. So I can download five today and I can come back tomorrow and I can download another five. But there are limitations on that. Um, one kind of cool thing is that if you need the video in a MP4 format, which is the most common video format, it's you know, going to play on just about anything. One way to do that is simply to upload it to YouTube and then download it again. Because if it's a .mov file or some of these other video file formats, YouTube recognizes an awful lot of them and will convert it into a nice MP4 and let you download it if you need that. So a little trick you can use even if you're not posting it or intending for it to post. Also, you can delete it forever. And we'll come back and I'm going to do that with these particular videos um, a little later. Um, but when you delete it, it's gone. There's no getting it back. Okay, other things you can adjust on the fly here. Generally, our videos are public, but you can, you know, make them private. If you make them private, you can share them with individuals. Um, but it's kind of an awkward way to have to share everything with, you know, the kids in your class, and there's a limited number of individuals you can share it with. 
The other option is unlisted, and, and this is where you could send someone the link and they could see it, but someone isn't going to find it just by going to YouTube and searching for it. Um, my feeling on this is I wouldn't put anything up there that couldn't be completely public. So I would post nothing that was at all sensitive or um, needed to be in any way private. Just wouldn't do it. Okay, so and you can also use this to schedule. So if you didn't want something to go public, I, I've never particularly used this on YouTube, but, but you could. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about how many times it's been viewed, if there's been comments, likes, and dislikes. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you hit this edit button, it's going to get you back into that initial screen like when you uploaded it. So you get to all the settings here. You know, some of these are accessible sh through shortcuts and some are not, but you can get the complete set just by clicking that pencil. Okay, other things you can do. If uh, this link underneath the content is for playlists. So these are playlists that, that I've created. Um, if I want to work on them, I can work on them here as well as outside. Like let's say I had some videos on here that I didn't want on here. So I could click on there. I could say, oh, you know, this was a mistake, so please remove it from there. And now my playlist only has two. I can also come in and change the title of my playlist if I made a mistake. I can change my playlist from private to public. Now, if my playlist isn't public and the videos are public, it's still going to be a problem. If I want people to see them, they should all be public. Okay, I can change the description here, but this is an important link down here. If I do not want this playlist anymore, it, I, well, first of all, I can add additional videos. Now I can go in and I can go to my YouTube videos and pick any one of them and put them on there. Or I can, you know, search for, search for videos, etc. So I can add to it. Um, I can add all of the ones that are on this playlist to another playlist. So that's a quick feature. Uh, I can collaborate. So if I was working with another teacher, I could give them access to this list. My playlist settings are somewhat limited. This allows embedding. So it allows someone to take the link and put this playlist into their own website. Um, you can disable that if you want. and Or you can leave it on. Now, add new videos to top of playlist. That just means is as, I, as I add videos, it's automatically going to put them at the top of the list. So it depends what you want there. Uh, most importantly here, I can delete this list. So now the list is gone. So if I refresh this screen, you can see that I'm one up. Oh, this one doesn't even have anything in it. So let me come in there, delete that playlist as well. Okay, notice those are opening in a new tab. And when I come back, I just have to refresh the page. And that's going to show me that I now have two playlists. Okay, um, the rest of these buttons we'll go through very quickly because you're probably not likely to, to use them a whole lot. Uh, this is analytics. Um, actually, if you do have videos that are up there for a while, this will just give you just a ton of information if they're being viewed. You can also go directly to comments. Again, something I wouldn't particularly recommend. Um, I wouldn't particularly recommend on a school site. But if you're doing a personal site, you can get your comments here and manage them. Okay, these are um, things that you could turn on subtitles for, etc. But the, mostly what you're going to use when you're in the studio is you're going to be able to deal with your content directly here, um, meaning your videos and your playlists.